Hey everyone, it's Sarah with Courageous Color, and today I want to walk you through a abstract idea that I had, and I'm using all fall colors. Okay, so I'm painting an abstract background with a maple leaf in front, but this is also an expressive art piece, so I will go ahead and talk through the colors and the brush strokes, um, so you will know sort of what emotions and feelings were going on and how those colors and brush strokes were helping to relieve some of that. Now, like I said, I'm gonna use all fall colors as this is an autumn theme. And I'm starting with green. And green right off the top of my head uh, always represents the environment. And so when I'm doing an expressive art piece, the green can represent the environment that's in my mind. Normally we associate green with healthy and things that are new or growing. And so I thought it was appropriate to use this because uh, I have a lot of new and growing things going on right now. And while you would normally think that that's all good and all happy and all up all the time, it can get very overwhelming and very stressful. And um, when I made this background, I was feeling very frustrated and somewhat indecisive. So I just had to take those uh, feelings and emotions that were going on and just really start to get those out. So starting with the green and really moving my brush in sort of like a haphazard motion was helpful. And I also started in the bottom left corner, I moved to the bottom right corner. And then, so there was some symmetry in that. And now I'm gonna start with the red or it's more of a maroon really. And the red here represents energy. Uh, there was a lot of energy going on and a lot of thoughts, a lot of um, sort of angst, I guess you would call it. And so red really is a good color for that because angst includes like passion and energy, and uh, but also like a warning or a danger. And so it's a really a mix, an equal mix of positive and negative feelings. Now I've also added a little bit of an orange red and the orange represents caution and frustration. So inside of all those emotions and that angst and the need to figure things out is some frustration. And so I'm sort of cautioning myself um, by using this color and, and also sort of scribbling here with the palette knife. And keeping in mind that I am composing a painting and so I want it to have some symmetry. I want it to have some landscape effect to it. I want it to have a picture, even underneath all of that uh, expression that I'm trying to release. So I'm messing with a little bit of brown and one because it's an outdoorsy color. So naturally it goes with the autumn uh, color palette, but also because brown can be a very dependable color and so I want to feel like while I'm painting that I can depend on myself to work things out, uh, make good decisions for the future, uh, maybe weigh the options of all the things that are going on in my mind and take time to plan uh, what's going to happen next. So I'm using a lot of these back and forth horizontal motions uh, while painting inside the brown and the red and the orangey color. And so that really just helps me when I start a painting to keep busy, keep my hand moving and, you know, sort of go back and forth and figure out all of those things that are going on in my mind um, by using sort of a steady back and forth motion with my hand. So hopefully that makes sense, but that uh, you know, you're just sort of keeping your hand busy so you can weigh over the things in your mind and figure out uh, and actually sort of like sift through them and let the good ones fall through and let the negative stuff get sifted out and so you can process that. And while I was processing all of the things in my mind and painting and using the different colors and also bringing together this uh, autumn and fall themed color palette, I was starting to get more positive. So I think that's what happens uh, whether you journal or whether you go and like exercise when you're feeling frustrated or like me, if you're painting, uh, at some point you move from, oh, I'm so frustrated and I'm aggravated and I just have to keep, you know, try to get this out. And you get to a place of like, I want this to get better. I want to start to move in the right direction and I want to be positive. And that's where I was at with the yellow. 
So I added the yellow uh, for some of that good energy, that sunny, happy, joyful feeling that was coming after getting sort of the negative feelings to come out, which coincidentally came at the same time as the first layer of this painting was being completed. So the first layer and the whole um, paper artboard that I'm using is now covered. And which is a great time, right, for all of the negative emotions to come out and then to start to get positive and figure out where do I want to go with this painting? What do I want it to look like now? How do I want to add some more color? And so for me, the second layer really felt like it needed to be more palette knife and more brighter colors, more yellow, more orange. Um, and now just moving the knife in such a way that is flowy. It's not like an angry thing. It's not um, a frustrated thing. It's more of like a calm, peaceful back and forth, which is starting to feel more like composing a piece than just trying to get all the frustration out. And so I think that's really cool that um, the first layer can just be like, I need to get this out of me. And this is the way I do it. And this is my therapy. And this is my my coping mechanism is to use my creative outlet. And, uh, and then as you move forward and you get all that out, you can, you can just start to compose this piece of art and figure out how it's going to look and how it's going to live and breathe. And at this point, it feels really right to put paint on there and then bring it toward the middle from the outside. I feel like it looks the way I want it to and just pulling the color in to cover over some of that negative emotion is exactly what I want to do. Um, and to create some of that contrast between the yellows and the reds uh, for just a bright pop. Because as things get better and as you put your piece of artwork together, you can just add things and add a little color and, and figure out where you want it to be. Uh, and at the beginning, I thought that the top would be like this really burnt sky and the bottom would be sort of the ground, but I'm loving this yellow color way too much. And so I feel like it needs to be in the top and the bottom. So I'm not sure if that represents flowers just yet or, or why it needs to be there, but I am going to bring that yellow color sort of throughout the painting. And I'm going to change my mind a few times before the background of this is finished. So I will let you listen to some music uh, while I get that done. So now that I have a positively abstract, messy, fall colored background, I have decided to add um, a maple leaf. And I'm not really sure how accurate I want this leaf to be at the moment, but I know that I need a focal point, a center item in the middle of this painting because 
I I like the background, I like the way it looks, but I just want something added over top of it uh, to be the focus. So you can uh, take this little leaf journey with me and see what I figure out. I've never painted a leaf like this before. So the first thing that I wanna do to try to attempt this leaf is just to put a bunch of colors together that I see in a fall leaf. So like the yellow and the orange, and then maybe some red. And the second thing is to get the balance of those colors right so that it looks like there's a light side and a dark side and an accurate depiction of a leaf, even if it does end up uh, more on the abstract side. And I'm looking at a photo of a leaf that I think is really gorgeous, but I don't want to copy it to a T. Um, one, because I'm not sure I can, and two, because uh, I want this leaf on my painting to be my leaf. And uh, I don't know if you feel that way too when you're doing a painting or trying something new, but uh, you definitely, I'd, I'd never want to like copy, you know? But I do want to get the shape of the leaf right. And right now it kind of looks more like a handprint. So I'm going to work on the shape a little bit and make sure it does look like a leaf rather than I stuck my hand in paint and put it right in the middle of my painting. And then I'm going to take my palette knife and start to make some of those veiny lines that are in the leaf. And then I'm going to experiment a little with the red here. So I'll let you listen to a little bit more music while I figure out exactly how I want the colors to flow on this leaf. <laughs> So it's looking a lot better now and I'm hoping that adding this stem isn't a mistake but I'm gonna try to do the stem as well um, and honestly redoing those lines with the palette knife was super therapeutic just sort of like carving through the paint and uh, making those lines again it was oddly satisfying so I'm just gonna continue that throughout the leaf so that you can see all the little veiny pieces and then I will go back to working on that stem because I cannot seem to get the exact right color for it. So we will see if this stem <laughs> ends up defeating me or not. And maybe I just better leave it alone before I make more of a mess than I want to. <laughs> so I will um, sort of add the little tippy points to the end of the leaves and hopefully I'll be able to call this one done. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and turn on notifications to see videos as soon as they are uploaded. Visit CourageousColor.com.